Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher. I'm Robin Harden, your host. This is the program where you can find peace through understanding your dreams. We're coming to you today from Jackson, Tennessee, where a mother and daughter share dreams. Kimberly is underwater and can't swim, and Taylor learns that she's being called as a leader to her generation. Plus, part four with my interview with Mike McClung. You will be blessed by today's program. Shonda has hosted a Dream Catcher seminar, and we are in Jackson, Tennessee, in her place of business, and uh, we're just having a good time. A small crowd. We're hearing from the Lord. Thank you, Shonda, You're for welcome, doing that. Robin. This has been good. It's been good to see it you. Is. We know that the enemy's purpose, according to John 10:10, 10, 10, is to steal and kill and destroy, and he will do that. This was the story. This is when I kind of he quieted at my mouth. I was in fourth grade, so 12, 11, 12. We were living in Utah at the time. And I went to a friend's house. Her daddy was the principal. And we went to her house. They had like a little garage outside and we were playing in the garage. Beautiful day like today. And I said, have I been here before? And she said, I don't think so. And I said, I feel like I've been here before. I said, but when I was here before, it was storming and the the shutters were slamming and, and it was, you know, a real scary storm and we went outside and we looked at the sky and, and you know, 10 or 12, however you want, we decided it wasn't going to storm, we were good. We go back in and a little bit later, the sky got dark, the storm came, the shutters were slamming, <laughs> we ran in the house squealing and then she never invited me back over because she was afraid of me because I was a weirdo. And I was afraid of the dream, about the storm, and she was afraid of me because I was weird, because I had told her we were going to storm. And I realized then, don't tell people. Don't tell people you've had a dream. And you have a dream. It wasn't recent. How long no, ago? No, it's probably been over 10 years oh, ago. Oh, a long time ago. Okay. And I would have repetitive dreams, the same dream over and over. And um, it, it could have even been 10 or 15 wow, years ago. Okay. But um, the reason it was frightening to me is because I can't swim. And in my dream, I was um, underwater. I kept going underwater over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought I was drowning, I thought I was dying, and I didn't know what that represented. And it really, truly scared me. And I never really told it to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I think here recently, I think I may have shared it with my cousin Shonda. And um, so I was just wondering. What did we learn today about the water? <laughs> it's, the it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And what is he doing with you in that dream? He's taking you under. He's immersing you in it. He's completely covering you in it. Mm -hmm. And then you, but you're scared because that's yeah. why you're scared because the devil is saying, I can't do this. I can't swim. Yeah. I can't do anything the Holy Spirit wants me to do. Neither can you. You can't do anything he wants you to do mm -hmm. unless he does it. But we can do all things through Christ. And when the Holy Spirit calls us to do something, it's usually the scary stuff. It's mm -hmm. the scary stuff. If it was mm -hmm. easy, we would just do it. Right. But it's the scary stuff they cause us to do. And it's, it was just like the dream, it's like when I had the dream about the storm, Yeah. and I said something to my friend, and the enemy shut me up. Mm -hmm. Well, look what he's doing to you. He's shutting you up with a, even, your, even though this is your brain, your spirit mm -hmm. goes, mm, I don't know, I can't swim. Right. So when the Holy Spirit wants to take you deeper, Something in you goes, oh, I don't know. That's little. Mm -hmm. That's further than I am comfortable with. And and however he says it to you, however the lies of mm -hmm. someone's watching, what would people think? This isn't really you. You know all mm -hmm. the lies that mm -hmm. that he does. Um, but now that you know that, yeah. there's a freedom because the word says, "Who the Lord has set free is free indeed." Yeah. So when you're praying or you're going through However, you feel that Holy Spirit and you feel like He wants to take you deeper, 
and that fear comes on, you can mm -hmm. go, oh, wait a minute, no, I, yeah. I know okay. what that is. I can swim. Okay. <laughs> He's got me. He's going to support me. And deeper, you know, we all want deep, deep Christ to deep. Mm -hmm. We all want to go deeper. And if we don't, what, why don't we? What are we afraid of? There's something holding us back. Mm -hmm. And so many times it's what will other people think. Right. You know, like the little girl who didn't let me come back over. <laughs> <laughs> so now that okay. you know that, you don't have to have that fear. And you happen to eat it over and over. What did, what did we learn about that happening over yeah. and over? I, I, I must have missed that part because I wasn't oh, sure with the repetition. Genesis, Genesis 41, 32. Joseph mm -hmm. interpreted the dreams for the Pharaoh about the fat cows and skinny cows mm -hmm. and the, the fat barley and skinny barley. Mm -hmm. They were two dreams, but it was the same message. And the the message wasn't good in his case, mm -hmm. but the, the word says in 4132 that because you had this dream more than once, mm -hmm. God has decreed it and it will happen. It will happen quickly and it, quickly to God and quickly to us. You know, it's not always the right, same. Yeah, exactly. But now that you know mm -hmm. that he wants to immerse you, okay. he's going to immerse you. As soon as you relax and let mm -hmm. him, it's going to just happen. Okay. And right. that is exciting. Okay. And it's good to have that fear because mm -hmm. you may not walk in it every day mm -hmm. consciously, but because that was in your spirit and mm -hmm. that fear was in there, it's still there. And now it's gone. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up next, more with Mike. My interview with Mike McClung continues. If you've missed any of our interview, you'll want to watch on Facebook or on YouTube. Next, Mike and I are going to discuss the godly connection between Tennessee and Israel. If you've enjoyed the program and you've been touched, I want to encourage you. Perhaps you can touch someone else by being a guest on Dreamcatcher. Let's see what God is saying. Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets were here in Nashville. And during that meeting, the day before that meeting with Chuck and Dutch, the Tennessee State Legislature was the second one in the nation to approve a resolution of officially recognizing the state of Israel. Tennessee was, was one of two states to officially recognize and uphold the right of the state of Israel to exist. And then in April of 2014, there was a meeting in the state capitol where the uh, Tennessee State Legislature passed a resolution as an official apology for Tennessee's participation in the Trail of Tears and the Indian Removal Act. We were there for that because we had participated in it. I think those two acts, because what Chuck Pierce said in 20, 2003, and he was in Chattanooga in 2010, a good friend of ours, Betty Lundquist, down there, she's, she's taken the South Gate, she's down there. That he was there, and he spoke and he said, God is lifting the state of Tennessee up above the conformity of the land of the whole uh, country. He, because Tennessee has gained authority with God over the spirit of Jezebel, over the Antichrist spirit, and he was lifting Tennessee up, and worship was going to be established in Tennessee that would affect the entire country. And it goes back to because of the covenant that the state of Tennessee had come into with God to right wrongs. And this is four years before the uh, resolution as the official apology for the Trail of Tears. And so he prophesied this back in 2010. And we've got all this on our website. If you go to lionheartministries.org, we've got all of these prophetic words that you Good. can search Good. out. Ask. And uh, we've got it enumerated. And so, this is in 2003, uh, Chuck and Dutch are prophesying about Tennessee and the authority that God's bringing. 2010, he, he uh, re-emphasizes that, but he's talking about how the people in the body have to come out of the existing structures mm. to be able to prevail in this authority. And so that's what we're coming out of this Babylonian church mindset or a church mindset to be more kingdom-minded right. of what he's doing. So there's a remnant. Mm -hmm. 
and through the pri and so what he's doing now it's not just the worship and the intercession but there's proclamation being added to this this is what he's saying for mm -hmm. Tennessee to come into agreement to prophesy mm -hmm. Terry Bennett's a very well-known prophetic voice Terry had a uh, uh, he had a visitation from the angel Gabriel in 2011 that gave him a prophetic scenario for the country through 2028 and he had another uh, encounter with that same angel this was just a few years ago and he gave him the whole prophetic perspective even to the point of Donald Trump being elected but he said that sometime in the mid 20s that the country would undergo a civil war and it would be broken up in kind of like factional government governments but the word that he got now this is trying to take this whole thing in we've tried to pull this whole thing in the word that he got was, the South will save the Republic. Wow. Okay. The hub of eight is the gate of apostolic revival. Tennessee and the eight states. Mm -hmm. What is that? That's the Southeast. Mm -hmm. So, what is, if you take all of this, there is a, a responsibility yes. and an accountability yes. The body of Christ in Tennessee yes. has not business usual, mm -hmm. build my church as big as it can be, make a name for ourselves, which is the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. We want to make a name for ourselves. Mm -hmm. This is about his purpose. Literally what that says, and this may be grandiose. I could be completely wrong, open to correction on this, but we prayed through this, that the, the fate and the destiny of the United States depends to some degree mm -hmm. on how the saints in the state of Tennessee respond to this call. Mm -hmm. So we're taking it very, yes. very seriously. And I know Pastor Todd, Brother Todd, and other people here are taking it seriously mm -hmm. and we're pressing into this because this may mean life and death for our children. Yes, yes. And so we're we're going after this thing with everything we have of course it's being opposed mm -hmm. but things are shifting now you can feel it because there's got to be a governmental order come in to back the worship and the intercession right. the warfare so when the warfare takes place there can be a, a filling of the vacuum yes. when the demonic structure is displaced or moved out of the way and so there's got to be training. New training. We have to be totally, completely retrained. Retrained. You're exactly right. Repentance. Yes. There's got to be a complete yes. changing of the mind. I tell people that we need to start reading the Bible as if we've never read it before. Because we read it like we know what it says. Right. And we really don't. Nope. <laughs> we read it with a mindset. And we've got right. to read it as if we've never read That's it. That's exactly. Let me give you an example of what you just said. Matthew 16. Where the Lord Jesus himself, they're at... Caesarea Philippi, which is at the foot of Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. Now, in the book of Enoch, if you go back to Enoch, and Enoch is either quoted or referenced 47 times in the New Testament. Mm, okay. So it has apostolic authority. Jude quotes it directly. Peter quotes it directly in, in, second, in First Peter. So there's apostolic authority there. It's canonical. That's up to, you know, mm -hmm. it used to be a part of our canon until 553 A.D. when the mm -hmm. Catholic Church removed it. Mm -hmm. And it explains a lot of things that people stumble over. But in the book of Enoch, it talks about these different dimensions uh, that, we're, that we're talking about now, of how things got to the place that they are and what God's uh, intention were to bring these things, well, to, to understand that. Well, he's, uh, Enoch talks about the angels, Genesis 6, 4, that, that came down and literally had sex with women and these Nephilim were born, these mm -hmm. giants, mm -hmm. these half, half demon, mm -hmm. that basically a demon in a human body. Right. And explains when the flood came, God had to send the flood to save the human mm -hmm. race and these disembodied spirits became the demonic that we deal with. Well, uh, to understand that, so Jesus is here at the foot of Mount Hermon, and the next day is the Mount of Transfer, where this was a gate of hell, Jesus switched, switched it, mm -hmm. where here comes the presence of the Father, the Shekinah glory, and heaven opens up. I just, mm -hmm. Jesus goes, he's a warrior. Yes, Jesus yes. is not nice. Yes. He's kind, yes. but he is not yes. nice. He is a shepherd and he is kind, 
But, you know, the woman taken in adultery, he's in the dirt with her, mm -hmm. encouraging her, but he says, don't do this again. Yes, he does. Don't do this because mm -hmm. things can get... He didn't pull get, any punches. Right. <laughs> so he does this and it's at Caesarea Philippi, but it's there where he says, I'm going to build my ecclesia mm -hmm. and the gates of hell will not prevail against my ecclesia. Well, I've heard that taught most of my life. That there's nothing the devil can do. He's going to hurt you, you know, and it's everything that I've taught about that, I've heard taught about that is defensive. That's not what he says. He says the gates of, what are gates? They're defensive mechanisms, right, to keep invaders out. Right. He says, my church is going to bust the gates of hell open. Right. It's not that whatever the enemy does, we're it's going to sit here offensive. in a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be on. He says, yeah. my church is going to be continually taking ground and destroying mm -hmm. the gates and demonic altars of hell. And so all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, I've got new eyes here. That's not what he said. So we've got to rethink yeah. even some of the things yeah. we've been taught. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God, something that I did. And it's just little short stories of how God brought me through debilitating shyness, debilitating. I mean, I never raised my hand through school. I raised it one time to answer a question. And the only reason I a answered it was the teacher said, I'm going to call on someone who doesn't have their hand raised because that means they don't know the answer. And I thought, oh, dear, I don't want him to call me. So I raised my hand. And he was shocked that I raised my hand, so he called on me. And then I just put my head down, and he just wouldn't go away. And he goes, what is the answer, Miss Wood? And I, I couldn't even answer. And I couldn't even bring my hand down. And, he's, and I'm praying, God, just let him walk away. Just let him walk away. And then he says, I'm going to have to call on someone else. And uh, don't be like Miss Wood and raise your hand if you're not going to say anything. And I was traumatized. I didn't go to school the next day. I had to take a couple of days off. I mean, I was... I, I lived in such a spirit of fear. It's a spirit. It was a spirit of fear. It was. It's crazy. And so these are some of the little stories of how God got me out of that. The three book series is now available at Amazon.com. One of my longtime viewers, Shonda, decided to host a Dreamcatcher seminar. She's the owner of Anointed Flowers and Gifts in Jackson, Tennessee. Her place was too small, so we actually held our seminar inside the chapel of a funeral home. I'd love to connect with you. I'll come to your church, a small group. We can even meet in a funeral home. God is not dead. He's talking to us, and He wants you to know what He's saying. I had this dream on Christmas, like, after, like the night of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, like, this was after I had, like, was at my auntie's house and stuff, and then we all had came home. Then I went to sleep. And the dream that I had was I was in my hometown, and I was at my auntie's house. And then we smelled, it's like we had Christmas again, but we were at her house though. And um, we were smelling like smoke, and everybody was like looking what it was. But then everybody looked out the window, and then it was a house that was outside, it was on fire. But then everybody just started doing whatever they were doing. They just went back to regular. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm about to go somewhere. And it was nighttime though. And I told my mom that I was like, okay, well, I'll be back, blah, blah. And I was putting my shoes on. And then when I went outside on the porch, my mom was right there too. And then I got scared, but I didn't say anything. I just waited until I was far enough away and then I just kept on saying I rebuke in the name of Jesus because I was scared. Mm -hmm. And then, but when I did that, um, her face had came off and then it flew on me like something scary, like it was black or whatever. Your mama's face? But it wasn't mm -hmm. yeah. really my mom, I guess. Mm -hmm. So then on the, the house that was across the street, it wasn't on fire anymore, it was just burnt down. And then the people that lived there, they was walking to their car like nothing was wrong and then I was trying to walk to the car and then one of the girls like the thing that was on my face mm -hmm. it came off and then it went on her face mm -hmm. and then she just started shooting people mm -hmm. but I was just standing there and, like I was just watching mm -hmm. and she tried to shoot me but it wasn't 
shooting me though. Right. And then I looked over and then my auntie's house was on fire too, but it wasn't burnt all the way. It was just at the top. So what do you think that means? Wow. I think and that this means is how I remember okay. because I wrote it down in my notes. Okay. And I was scared because I woke up and then I told my mom, like, because I was scared. Yeah. How old were you when you had that dream? Mm, I was 15. Wow. Because my birthday is three days after Christmas. Oh. This was a very scary dream, but but it's very exciting for you because God is revealing not only some plan of the enemy, mm -hmm. but also a, a real call on your life of discernment. The the house is burning across the street, and no one seems to really care. And spiritually, that's where we are living. People are burning and going to hell. And no one really seems to care, even believers. And, and not necessarily, we don't even care as much as we don't want to get involved and we don't, we don't step out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because we don't see it. But you see it. <coughs> and even the people whose house burnt, they're just going on like it's no big deal because that's kind of where we are in spiritually. Um, our lives are burning spiritually. Things are being destroyed, our families are being destroyed, and we just go along and we don't fall to our knees. And the scary part is you think you're talking to your mother and something comes, her face comes off and comes into you. Your face is your identity. Mm -hmm. And this is obviously not your mother. So the Lord is, is showing you to be careful that not everyone is who they pretend to be and that the darkness that's in them, mm -hmm. they will try to put onto you and change your identity because it went onto your face. And to some of you, like your friend, it went on to, from you onto her and she started shooting people. Mm -hmm. It's showing that sometimes people do project the evil that's within them, within their heart, and it changes your friend's identity but you were saved from it and why do you think you were saved from it because you stood and you said in the name of jesus i rebuke you in the name of jesus so he's showing you that the the enemy is going to try to come the enemy the devil mm -hmm. the satan is going to try to come and lie to you about your identity your identity is in christ you are more than a conqueror you are the head and not the tail that's who you are. You are a child of the Most High God. The enemy is going to try to tell you lies, that none of that is true. And even some of your friends, your close friends, are going to believe the lie of the enemy. That I'm nobody. I'm not worth it. I, you know, I had to fight my way through. You fight, but our weapons aren't guns. And there's a scripture that says, no weapon forged against you will prosper. Even though she's trying to shoot you, it didn't hurt you. It didn't prosper. It didn't happen. Now, in real life, she may try to shoot you with words or gossip or jealousy. I mean, you're a beautiful young lady. Thank you. I can see uh, someone being jealous of everything you've got going on. But unfortunately, sometimes in the church, people are jealous of our gifts as well. And you have a gift of discernment. You smelt the smoke. Smelling is like, something's going on here. That's discernment. And then you saw that something was going on, and you rebuked it. You took a stand. No one else was taking a stand. You took a stand. It's also important for us to all realize the girl in your dream may not be her. It, she may just represent your friends or your peers. Sometimes when someone's in your dream, it's who do they represent or what do they represent, not necessarily them. Um, it may not necessarily be the, the, the neighbor to your auntie. Right. It may not be your auntie's house that's burning. But you have family members, extended family members, represented by the auntie's house, mm -hmm. whose lives are being destroyed. by, And that could be, you know, addiction, jealousy, marriages, whatever's in the world here, but you can smell it. You have a discernment, and you know what to do with it once you smell it, is you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And you don't allow, that, that identity's not allowed to change you. So that's, that's a, a complex dream, because there's a lot going on in it. But he's warning you that it's, it's out there, 
and the devil hates you. He hates you. And his job is to rob from you, steal from you, and to kill you. And he has, that's his job. That is his job. And so he's going to do that however he can. And that's why you rebuke and use your discernment. And then those weapons cannot harm you. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was really good. good. Thank you. Thank you. That was, a, that was a powerful dream. The Lord is speaking to her at a young age, too. She was dreaming, um, like if, if you have a dream and you're not a few years over 15, and you're dreaming of a place you grew up at. If you're an adult and you grew, I keep dreaming of grandma's house or where you grew up at, that's referring to your past. And thank God, did something happen in that time in your life? Maybe that is when you um, realized your gift. God has just shown her, she, one of her gifts is the gift of discernment. And that she's strong. And that, ide that false identity is not going to attack her. And that no weapon formed against her is going to prosper. There's going to be more that she's going to learn as she gets older. But if, if you're 40 and you dream of grandma's house or where you grew up, what did God tell you then? Maybe that's when you start thinking, maybe I want to be a missionary. Maybe that's when he put that in your spirit. And maybe that didn't happen, and it's not too late. Whatever, whatever it is he's calling you to do. We're all breathing, as far as I can tell, because no one's in the other room since we are in a funeral home. Uh, and as long as we're breathing, we have a gift, and, and we have a purpose, and we have a plan that God has put in us. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference to help you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you. Straight from the Bible, symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream. In addition, there's 195 different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream. Order yours today. Joseph Storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month to help distribute food and God's Word to hundreds of hungry families. Hi, I'm Pastor Kathy Tack from Generations of Grace. It's been our blessing to serve at Joseph Storehouse this month. If you're looking for a church, come visit us. We're behind the Dunkin' Donuts on West Main. Our website is at generations.church. You, too, can be God's hands. Next time on Dreamcatcher, more with Mike. My interview with Mike McClung comes to an end. You will not want to miss this informational wrap-up. Mike has been sharing some extraordinary revelation and knowledge. I know you've been blessed by it. If you've missed any of Mike, if you just want to watch it again, you can catch Dreamcatcher on YouTube or on Facebook. Catch us next time, and remember, catch your dreams. Mm -hmm.